Centennial is number seven. St. Edward's number eight. Mission Viejo is number nine, actually. Big jump for that. St. John Bosco is number 10. St. Thomas Aquinas is 11. Trinity Christian Academy is 12. Cedar Park, who is also a state champion. Can't forget about those guys. Um, they are number 13. Lake Travis, 14. I kind of had a weird thing with this, Ryan, because, like, Texas had a, such a weird – uh, draw, I guess, or just a team. Everyone kind of beat each other up. Lake Travis, I yeah. have 14. Westlake at 15. North Shore, you know, they are state champions. They deserve to be number, you know, in the top 25. Even though they lost three games, you know, they took care of business. And then how do I have at 17, even though they've only lost one game in the past four years or five years now? So it's just uh, – just had to happen that way. You know, they got eliminated too early. Trinity is number 20, actually. They've only lost one game today. South, I have a number four, but they lost pretty early, so they only played 11 games. Uh, Spanish Fort of Alabama is number 18. Damascus Catholic is number 19. Northwestern, Rock Hill, South Carolina State Champs are number 21. Eastside Catholic is number 22. Roswell, who, you know, took a loss uh, in the state championship game is 23. Don Bosco Prep, New Jersey State Champs are 24. And Bishop Moore, the 4A Florida State Champs are number 25. Um, I mean, you heard my top four, Ryan. I mean, disagree, agree on that. <laughs> you know, I think um, I, if you remember last week, I said that uh, you, your, your question that you asked me was, do you think there's a team that will take a sweep of all the national titles? And uh, it turned out where three different uh, teams were crowned mythical national championships, depending on what publication you're looking at. So I, I really firmly believe I can't disagree with anything that you say, you know, that you said. It's all, you know, very uh, factual based and, and your opinions are great. Um, I would just flip flop Colquitt and Katie, just my personal opinion. But Katie, the distance between Bishop Gorman at one and Katie at three is um, probably as close of a gap as there can be because I just think all three have um, – good resumes. I would put Bishop Gorman one just because they they beat six quality teams. Um, you know, seeing them play in person, I, you know, a lot of it I try to back up with facts, but the eyeball test certainly comes into play because I've seen them um, can beat you in so many different ways. Um, a cold quit, um, they're two at the end of the season, Mill Creek and Roswell, how they beat those teams and dominated them. Um, and then sort of the tiebreaker with Katie, uh, Colquitt played two out-of-state teams for, uh, from Florida and Alabama. Um, Katie's sort of well-documented that they're not really interested in playing in national games. Um, just recently, somebody dug up the archives of a 2014 article that said that they weren't really interested in playing Bishop Gorman, Euless Trinity, Hoover, Alabama, St. Thomas Aquinas, Don Bosco Prep, and other teams. So, if you don't want to play the best teams in the country, then, you know, that's just a small <laughs> little uh, difference to me. Um, so I'd rather put teams like Bishop Gorman or Colquitt that are willing to schedule tougher teams um, up there. So, uh, And then I would have De La Salle at four. Um, I think what's funny is if, if De La Salle is within um, – they were within inches of uh, touchdown as time expired with their game against Trinity – if they connect on that pass, and there's really not much of a discussion. I think everybody would have them at number one, um, and, and that's where they enter the season in most publications as number one. Um, so De La Salle really not far behind at four either. I would put IMG at five because they, they schedule so tough in different states, and um, it's a shame that they only play nine games. Um, but then at five, and then uh, Centennial, St. John Bosco, um, two close teams. Centennial played De La Salle tough. Not much separation there. So um, that would round out my top, what was that, seven. So, um, But, yeah, I, I agree with you on Bishop Gorman. I think they're going to go even tougher next season, um, like I mentioned last week, and uh, really try to prove themselves. Yeah, I mean, I can't complain with that. And like you said, Katie, I mean, I know Texas team takes pride, they take pride in playing their own state because their state's hard to play – yeah, 16 games um, and get, run through Texas without, you know, any selection committee or anything like that. It's, it's tough. You play everybody pretty much. But, however, I mean, uh, they had it easy early on. I mean, they were shutting people out, which was great. It's hard to do that for this one, but they had it a little easier. Um, but I don't know. I mean, Bishop Gorman had it a little easier towards the end. So, I mean, it kind of even yeah. out, I guess. Cold Quick kind of was smooth through. They didn't have any big time. 
out of state games. They play out of state. It's just you know they played team from Alabama is pretty solid, not great. Like Bishop Gorman played, you know, Don Bosco Prep. They played Chandler. They played team from Utah. So I mean, you know, they did a good job. The other side did a great job, even though they lost that game. Like you said, they were a couple, a couple plays, or just one play, really away from being yeah. the number one team in the country. Um, even even that team uh, in Lakewood, Ohio, St. Edwards, man, that's the St. Team Edwards, that's sure. Won. Yeah, that's the team that's one play away. I mean, <laughs> Mail uh, might be the most underrated team in the country, six uh, A state champion, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I don't think they're quite as talented as the teams we mentioned before. And the St. Thomas Aquinas, you know. Um, they can be anyone anywhere, but they struggled. You could see the, their struggles this year on offense, even though they did win a 7 eight state title, um, two-time defending state champion. But they did struggle on offense. Jake Allen was hurt, uh, their star quarterback. So they, they had and they couldn't really run the ball too well. Their line was really inexperienced, but uh, the team yeah. next year is going to be really good. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I got to ask you, I mean, your website, Vibe, I mean, who do you guys have at number one? I haven't checked it out yet. I'm sorry? Who's your website? Have oh, number one? On, uh, yeah, on nationalhighschoolfootball.com, uh, Katie took home the prize. Okay, Katie. that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, Kate, Katie. Yeah, I don't have. Won. Uh, yeah, I don't have much of an impact on on those rankings, but um, okay. That's who, uh, yeah, that's all. That's the Dallas Jackson show. He does a great job. He does his homework. Um, you know, a lot of homework, and uh, you know, for me, I, I see Bishop Gorman nine times a season, so. You know, I try not to have any bias or or be a homer, but um, that's where I'll I'll disagree with uh, with the top dog at nationalhighschoolfootball.com. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll disagree. I just think, like I said, it's close. I really think that uh, if these four teams were to play in the playoffs, like Rush Press was talking about earlier, I believe, um, article we both kind of retweeted from USA Today, that it would be fun, you know, a neutral side matchup between these four teams. Um, I honestly think IMG is a little bit better than De La Salle. I just think resume-wise I have to put De La Salle ahead. Um, I think IMG can honestly be anyone in the country. I'm just saying that. I mean, I know that this team's kind of put together a little bit, but this team is kind of different. I feel like this team is uh, just really special. I've never seen so much uh, talent, people on one team before, so much speed. So I really feel like they could – you know, I wish they yeah. were playing Colquitt County, which was supposed to be the thing, or Bishop Gorman, whoever, but – yeah, it looks like that's just not going to happen this year. So we'll have to wait and see if that happens next year. Um, I think yeah. you know, even if I look, if I peaked next year, I would say Gorman one, Katie two, Colquitt three, and I think uh, De La Salle before. I think it would be the exact same, actually. Yeah, so, I know. Uh, uh, it, it's going to be pretty interesting. California, De La Salle, and Centennial Corona—they both lose a ton of impactful players. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. De La Salle. Uh, I believe they'll only return one star-rated player. Not that that's the end-all, be-all, but uh, they sure do lose a ton of talent. Um, St. John Bosco loses a lot, too. It, it'll actually be, uh, on paper, modern day will have the most impactful returners than any of the top teams in the state. So uh, we'll see how they do. And I know uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, they return a lot of, of talent. Yes. I believe <laughs> nine star-rated players, including four-star quarterback and five-star receiver. So um, St. Thomas Aquinas should be up there, too. Yeah, they return a lot of guys. And Don Bosco Prep, though. look out for those guys. Tell me to feel. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I didn't healthy. even mention. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah those Jersey guys will be. That hell, hell. They have a good quarterback crop of underclassmen coming up, so. Oh, yeah. They've got two guys, you know, Alan Walters Jr., who we have on the show, and Tommy DeVito, who we have on the show as well. So both those guys are really good. Trinity's going to be really good as well. Allen, of course, because it's Allen. Um, yeah. The team I would kind of look out for, uh, well, two teams, Westlake, um, because what Coach Dodd is doing down there is just special. I mean, they literally – I don't believe in you should have, could have, would have, but, I mean, they, they should have won that game. They, they really – they had, like, 18 penalties or something like that. They turned the oh, ball man. over. I've never seen them play so sloppy. Or, or heard they played so sloppy. I mean, I had a, a buddy down there at that game, all, all the Texas State games, and uh, he just said they looked uh, – they didn't look prepared, really. So it was yeah. kind of odd to see that. But uh, And then the team out of Philly, uh, the Institute Charter, uh, Philadelphia team, Mike Waters, uh, they won the state title um, in Hershey this week uh, or well, previously. And that's a team to look out for, too. I mean, they ran the table. They, they kind of came on late a little bit, but that's a really good team uh-huh. that's uh, – I think they returned seven star players, um, which is big, big time, especially yeah. in the offense. 
So that's going to be a team that probably won't stay in Pennsylvania again. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, it, it's a good uh, – I think USA Today, like I said, Gorman, Gorman, and Max Preps, Katie. MPP is Katie, too. I'm not sure what ESPN's doing their rankings exactly, but um, they had yeah. the massive Catholic in the top five from what I heard, which is pretty high. Um, I, I, they just – you know, they were 11-1. and one. They didn't play too many – played some really good opponents, actually. They just didn't play that many games. Uh, they haven't played in, like, five weeks. So I guess they're kind of a forgotten yeah. team. But uh, I guess I'll, you know, before I let you go, Ryan, I'll open it up to the guys. If they have any questions about the top five or my top four, his top four, uh, shoot. Well, I guess my question would be, I know obviously things change over time, but I'm thinking about some of the traditional powerhouses back in my day a million years ago. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Carter High School in Dallas, uh, Brashear and Central Catholic in Western Pennsylvania. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, obviously, you know, some of the schools in New Jersey, but I remember uh, Passaic used to be, you know, they had Ironhead Hayward. I mean, they, they had um, Quintus McDonald and, you know, I mean, they were a factory back in the day. Um, mm-hmm. Banning High School in Carson, California was a factory back in the day. Some of those sort of older programs that used to just just churn out talent. I mean, and I don't know Plant's been good um, recently, but fairly recently, but not apparently, you know, a top program in the last couple of years. Is it just, you know, sort of coaching changes or is it demographic shifts with the talent moving to different parts of the city or different parts of the state? Why do you think some of the traditional powers that I remember from my era aren't on the radar anymore as great programs. Yeah, I uh, I bet you could um, do some studies uh, in the demographics, and that's a great point, and I bet that's part of it. Um, I, I've had, uh, you know, you look at a team like Modern Day, who's not a fossil of a program, but they haven't won for a while, and they still have a lot of talent. Um, they have a legendary coach there, Bruce Rollinson. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I he's... think... It, won yeah, like 400 you, some odd games or something crazy. <laughs> yeah, and in the 90s they were taking down the great poly teams and and that was enough to win, you know, mythical national championships back then. But I think in the game today it's changed so much to the spread offense and the high flying, you know, type offenses where um a the the old school way. Although the Jersey schools do a good job of succeeding with the old school way, the pro style offense and and you know the stout defenses. Um, I'm not sure what kind of offense Katie runs, but I know they you know a lot of their success is due to their defense. Um, but I, I think um, some of these coaches just aren't adjusting with the times, and uh, as a result. Um, a, the spread offenses and these new age coaches may have the one up just in the game plan, but also the kids want to play in those high flying offenses, and um, you know they're more attracted to those schools. Whether it's as freshmen starting their high school career, they pick those schools over um, some of the old traditional powers that don't um, that didn't establish that brand that the newer age schools are. Um, or B, they're transferring to those schools after they realize, you know, we know there's a lot of transferring that goes on in this country. Um, so maybe after they realize, well, I'm a four- or five-star receiver and uh, they don't throw the ball, we just run. So I'm getting out of here. Um, I think those are probably two leading factors on why we see some of these great programs of years past um, shift away. Uh, I had that conversation actually with somebody at the state championship games in California that, some places, uh, Grant High School in Sacramento is a good good point, um, you know, a good example. Um, a lot of talent there, a lot of big boys, but um, some people are just under the impression that the coach is sort of beyond his years and uh, maybe it's time for some new blood there. Um, so. Okay. Interesting. But, yeah, um, you know, I think there's plenty of other factors um, like you mentioned, demographics being one. But I, I think that's, you know, maybe one of, of a handful of different topics that you could analyze that, that question with. Okay. And I guess my, yeah. my, my second and my final question, 
what are what's a program or who are a couple of programs maybe that you didn't mention already but you think are programs on the rise? 